American Superconductor Stock is the topic of today's presentation. And you may have come across AMSC stock recently because it's been soaring and wondered what that firm does or why it's jumped more than 100% over the past five days. Well, that has something to do with uh, what's been passed around by the news lately as a breakthrough in superconductive materials. Here you can see uh, several articles from the Times. One says, finally, the first room temperature superconductor. The one on the right says, new room temperature superconductor offers tantalizing possibilities. These are the sorts of headlines that you would have been seeing. But if you look at the bottom of this slide in the fine print there, what's interesting is that the first article, that's from 2020, and the second article is from March of this year. So this big news that broke out of Korea, what about seven days ago, uh, that's not the first time that we've heard that uh, a room temperature superconductor has uh, uh, suddenly been made available by somebody's uh, research efforts. Uh, when we invest, we don't invest before revenues. That's a cardinal sin. That's because nine out of 10 startups fail in the venture capital world. So if you haven't proven traction or that you have a viable product or service, then the likelihood of failure is quite high. Imagine then investing before the existence of a technology has even been proven. And that's where we're at right now. So we need to start first at the beginning, because if this gets debunked, there's really no further action needed. Here you can see more recent headlines around this breakthrough. They're referring to it as LK99. And, uh, of course, there's varying opinions how it could be total BS or it could be the beginning of a new era for mankind. Well, we probably need to start at the beginning. What's a superconductor? Well, I took this from Wikipedia, and I think it describes these terms well. So superconductivity is a set of physical properties observed in materials where electrical resistance vanishes. So that's key. A superconductor is a material with no electrical resistance. And just to visualize what you might be able to do with that, they've described an electric current through a loop of superconducting wire can persist indefinitely with no power source. So essentially, it's its own battery. That's quite fascinating. You can see why people are getting excited. So you can turn to the subject matter experts out there like physics world, and they talk about superconductivity at room temperature being the holiest of holy grails in condensed matter physics. It needs to, uh, in order to qualify as being truly grail-like, this uh, newly synth synthesized superconductor uh, can't merely carry electric current without resistance at room temperature. It also needs to do it at ambient pressure to have practical applications such as a perfectly efficient power grid, levitating trains, commercially viable fusion reactors that are always five years away, and cheaper MRI machines. Now, what you can do is go look at the two papers that were published that created all this ruckus. Uh, the first there is at the bottom with three authors, and um, this would be such a breakthrough that uh, most certainly they would be awarded the Nobel Prize, and you can only have, um, let's say, not more than three people get that award. So some were wondering why they published a second paper here with three more names on it. Uh, the implication is that um, if this were a breakthrough of that magnitude, that everybody wants to get their name on the paper. So maybe some people in that lab uh, argued for a second paper with some more information, though it's been noted by some individuals that if you do some comparisons between these two papers, that there's some uh, different numbers. So it's either sloppy work or uh, evidence that they're uh, not doing something right. Now, this new material is called LK99. It's a composite ceramic made from lead, sulfur, and copper. Now, when we look at who's making this claim, uh, Physics World, again, says that the paper uh, is written by two material scientists at the Quantum Energy Research Center in Seoul, Korea, along with this individual from Korea University. And of course, when you go to that uh, center, it's blocked due to excessive traffic. And then you realize you're starting to go down a rabbit hole for no good reason. Strong public interest does nothing to validate the claim. And perhaps what's most remarkable here is the number of generative AI engineers who have suddenly become condensed matter physicists in a matter of day. So there's a lot of noise. And when it comes to uh, the approach we take as investors, we need a plan. 
I like this quote here from Scientific American. If rumor has wings, extraordinary scientific claims have a jet engine. There's always going to be a lot of noise, and every Muppet out there is going to be claiming they replicated whatever's said to have taken place. We need to stick to the process, so claims should be substantiated in the form of peer-reviewed research. And I think this comment on Tom's hardware I pulled off says it right. As with many scientific discoveries... Discovering something seemingly revolutionary often ends up in disappointment when the discovery cannot be turned into anything actually usable. Does anybody remember several decades ago when all those nanomaterials were emerging, dendromers and carbon nanotubes and quantum dots? We got some advancements out of that, but certainly nothing that was promised. This second statement is very important. A superconductor will have limited uses if you cannot cost-effectively make wires, discs, cylinders, and other basic yet very handy shapes from it. And indeed, that's correct. So this, this means the claims could be substantiated, but the material could turn out to be just a great party trick and little else. So uh, we also don't know elements of IP in case it is real. So uh, the basic research that we've done, inventors have rights, but then if you're working in a lab or at a university, then you, there's usually some rules around intellectual property that we just don't know. The answer here is to hurry up and wait, do nothing. Now, the people that aren't do nothing, um, they're often called degens. And what degens do when they see some great news that hasn't been validated is they go um, using the most sloppy method imaginable, they go find some stocks and invest in them. And this term, uh, somebody used it recently in our forum, and I've seen it used quite a bit. It's actually quite appropriate. And it's somebody who YOLOs all their money on a degenerate investment in the hopes of it mooning. And the example here they give is uh, this gentleman YOLOing his baby's college fund on TAN calls <laughs> and losing it all. So TAN, of course, is a solar ETF that uh, is quite volatile. And, uh, and of course, people will dabble in options and lose all their money. We've uh, written recently about uh, warning about all the... Uh, people proposing that options are a quick way to wealth. But here you can see what happens on Yahoo Finance if you search for the word superconductor. And look, there it is, American Superconductor Corporation. That has to be a stock that's relevant, and I must therefore invest in it because everybody else is. That's what's going on with American Superconductor. Now, a degen level two, maybe a degen aristocrat would actually go and pop open the 10K and then try to um, create some... Uh, relationships between the news and the company. And indeed, you can do that. And this isn't the first time we've come across American semiconductors. So they are a firm that manufactures these high temperature superconductor wires, HTS. That was an acronym being used a decade ago when I recall, I think they were working with Nanosys on quantum dots that would improve the superconductivity of their wires. And there was a lot of hype around this business and the value proposition, and nothing really transpired of that over the years. But um, still, there's relevance there, so they're transporting electricity, and they could do that much more efficiently with a superconductive material. Of course, they don't own it. They have no rights to it. There's no relationship between the two other than the fact that these people transport or provide the equipment to transport electricity. And in the 10K, they say that electrical losses in transmission in the United States, they're around 7%. So that's what you lose. Now, and you could save that immediately by switching to different infrastructure, which would require installing more overhead power lines and underground cables. And I like this statement here. They say, however, permitting new transmission and distribution lines can take 10 years or more. So, um, this goes to show that uh, even if this uh, breakthrough were correct and uh, the IP was sorted out and it moved to commercialization. It's going to take a very, very long time. And of course, you recall Gartner's hype cycle. And um, where you don't want to be getting involved is where the DGENs get involved. That's at the peak of inflated expectations. You always want that trough of disillusionment disillusionment to settle in. And um, it's early days. If you look at the superconductor thesis, though, there is something to be learned here. 
is this noise or an indication that we're getting closer to a breakthrough? In other words, we figured out some stuff and now uh, researchers can take this to the next level and, and eventually figure it out. Now we beat Go and we solved protein folding. That was with generative AI. Why not feed some of those algos, all these properties, and let them figure it out? Uh, so should we investigate the implications of this thesis for investors? Well, taking action too early is speculation in itself. We've seen this time and time again for nanomaterials. So the answer for investors is hurry up and wait, as we said before. Now, things we could do, people want to know if we actually had this discovery and it was commercialized, what could we do with it? Well, as we said earlier, it's lossless power transmission. Zero resistance means no heat generated by circuits means energy savings. So all batteries last longer. You can charge all devices faster. Trains can move with no friction. You have much cheaper medical imaging devices. And there's futuristic stuff like active structures because the wires can store energy that potentially you could have these structures that sort of uh, dynamically move in response to their environment. And really, the the coolest things that you could do with a discovery like this probably haven't been thought up yet. So just to conclude, there's absolutely nothing for investors to do right now. If you're dabbling in AMSC, just realize that you're uh, speculating on uh, volatility surrounding some very vague news at this point. Um, if the claims are proven and valid, even validated by experts out there, which some are saying is happening, that still tells us very little. We need to see traction in the form of revenues. That's the only indicator. It, quantum computing is a great example of this. That's the only indicator that some technology is commercially viable. And what you can expect now in the coming years are lots of breakthroughs because of AI advancements or even because people see how easy it is to get their names out there simply by making a claim that may perhaps not be true. We're investors, not speculators. We never speculate on what could happen. And uh, we'd leave this by saying, don't be a degen. So I'm going to put up another video here that you might be interested in. Before you watch that, please click the Analyze logo on the right. Subscribe to our channel. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this today.